This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need hosting for your art portfolio, blog, or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you need to build a sleek website and grow your brand. Oh look, the moon is out. Wait. <laughs> Okay, so imagine for a moment, if you will, that the Earth had two moons. Pretty wild, but not too insane. That's the situation on Mars. Okay, but what about 14 moons? Yikes. That's what it's like on Neptune, which is getting excessive. What about 83 moons? 83 moons. 83 moons. Hi, and welcome to the next installment of Turning Celestial Bodies into Minor Deities. I'm your host, woman who just got hair extensions in the mail today. Hair extensions. And my fellow extraterrestrials. We're in for a fun one today. This week we're just getting more wild because I'm adapting Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, which have just so much personality that they could rival that of the cast of Seinfeld. <laughs> Like I mentioned in the first video, this time around I want to dive more into the geology, the weather systems, and the unique characteristics of these planets. So a lot of my inspiration comes from distinct atmospheric and geological features like ice caps, volcanoes, and various storm systems, as well as the unique coloration of each planet and their size difference. So as for my boards, I went in a very similar direction as last time, leaning into sci-fi influences like Star Wars and Blade Runner, along with lots of very interesting runway looks. But this time with a more masculine edge, because upon research Searching the gender energies of these planets, they're all masculine. So as much as I was looking forward to drawing pretty girls this week, I'm gonna suck it up, put on my big girl pants, and draw masculine characters for once. I'm just kidding, they're gonna be hot. So first I got to work on the thumbnail so I can get an idea of what direction I wanted to go with everybody, especially in terms of color scheme and shapes. And also to get an idea of how they'll look together. I personally think these planets have a nice looking color palette all together, so that certainly helped. And this also helped me to divide them into archetypes that work well together in terms of characterization and overall tropes so that I can have some personality influence from them moving into the actual designs. So for Mars, I kind of went for masculine bad boy archetype. Jupiter is just a fancy dad. And Saturn is the strong silent type with immaculate fashion sense. I was definitely a little iffy on the direction these were going in at first, but it was something to go off of, so next I began working on Mars's full design. But first, let me ask you something. Are you an illustrator? Do you like designing characters based on inanimate objects? Do you have an intense fascination with space? Square space? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that allow you to effortlessly showcase your illustrations, character designs, and even costume designs to all your potential clients. Creating a portfolio site only takes about an hour thanks to handy tools like automatic image scaling, which allowed me to drop in all my portfolio pieces for effortless arrangement. And their high customization of text, colors, website pages, and page blocks give you the power to customize your site exactly the way you want. Want to be more connected to your other social media? platforms? No problem. Use a social block to link your Squarespace site to your various social media accounts so you can share recent social media posts on your Squarespace site. I like to link mine to my Instagram account because I'm a maximalist and I like stuff everywhere. Need multiple galleries for different kinds of design work? Create a costume design portfolio on a new page in mere minutes. Want to cross-promote YouTube videos or podcasts on your website? Use audio and video blocks to embed content from the internet or upload it directly from your computer. And if you're interested in selling your work online, Squarespace's e-commerce platform can be used to sell your work right alongside your portfolio and can be linked to a print-on-demand service like the one I use for a hands-off selling experience. So if you want to showcase your own art of beautiful celestial men, head to Squarespace squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch head to squarespace.com slash prickly alpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back to it. First up we have Mars, the red planet, and I was really excited for this one since there's been so much scientific research into surface conditions on Mars and I feel like there's a lot of information out there about it and I feel like it has a lot of unique traits, especially compared to some of the information I found about Mercury and Venus. There just wasn't as much 
wanted to go on whenever I was designing them, which was a little frustrating. Anyways, here's a little overview about the planet. I'm sorry, this information comes from Wikipedia. I'm not exactly serving graduate thesis with this video. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun, the second smallest official planet in our solar system, and is named after the Roman god of war. Mars is known to have a thin atmosphere, a nickel and iron core, much like the Earth, and a crust composition similar to that of the Earth as well. The surface has many interesting geological features, such as impact craters, valleys, dunes, and polar ice caps, and some notable features are the Vallis Mary Arn I should have looked up the pronunciation before, hold on. Okay, I feel stupid now. It's Vallis Marineris, which is one of the largest canyons in the solar system. Another is the Borealis Basin in the Northern Hemisphere, which covers approximately 40% of the planet and also might be a large impact feature. And last but not least, Olympus Mons, which is the largest volcano and highest known mountain on any planet in the solar system. High levels of iron oxide make Mars's surface appear red, earning it the nickname, the Red Planet. And while it's suspected liquid water may have existed at one point, liquid water can't currently exist due to atmospheric pressures. Both of Mars's polar ice caps appear to be largely made of water, meaning life on Mars in various states could have existed in the past due to wetter conditions. Mars is one of the planets that can be viewed from Earth with the naked eye and one of the brightest objects in Earth's sky. Bars. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Don't know if I'm saying that correctly, which have a close orbit to the planet and their composition is similar to asteroids. Mars is one of the celestial bodies that has been observed for thousands of years, even by ancient cultures, becoming intertwined with various mythologies. So already you can see from the thumbnails, from the information, from everything, I definitely had more ideas going into this design. Almost too many ideas, but we'll get to that. Like I said, at the top of the video, I began with mostly masculine design language for these guys, which always presents more of a challenge for me because I'm just better at drawing and designing women. There's just a lot more S curves and when I draw men, they mostly look like Minecraft characters, so it's a struggle. But I started out with some pretty sharp shape language for Mars since his namesake is the god of war. And to begin, I wanted to incorporate some of the key geological features like volcanoes, craters, and the polar ice caps into prints and some of the shapes of his garments. So since I wanted to incorporate armor into the design, you know, armor, war, I began with a single shoulder pauldron that's supposed to echo volcanoes, especially Olympus Mons being a single volcano that's bigger than everything else. I don't get it. And another key part of the beginning stages of the design was a large sand colored dressing gown to evoke the dunes and various surface features of the planet in the design. You know, we're very much serving Dune 2021. We're very much serving Timothy Chalamet in a still suit. That's kind of the vibes we're heading for at this point. And speaking of Chalamet, I straight up gave this character his hair from the new Bones and All movie. I make no apologies for that. Anyways, I put little geometric shapes on the bottom and on the shoulder of the dressing gown to be reminiscent of top off in the sedimentation of rock and added little white shapes here and there to represent the ice caps. But other than that, the design was mostly pants shoes. Um, because the outfit was just feeling a little boring, I did add a little bit more volcanic flair to the pants along with some of those topographic lines, kind of reminiscent of these fabrics. And at that point, I just didn't feel like the design was coming together very well. So I altered the shoulder pauldrons to cover both his shoulders and his chest so that the armor takes more of the forefront in the design. And I also tweaked the dressing gown to be a little bit more symmetrical. So here's the fun part. As I mentioned earlier, Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Don't know if I'm still saying that wrong. So I carried over the theme of animal companions representing moons from the Earth illustration and I gave him two fox companions because Mars is often associated with wolves and canid type animals so I figured foxes would be a good fit for this character's personality which I will get to. And to allude to the moons visually in this design I have him holding a few orbs implying that he can control his animal companions and also since these few characters have infinitely more moons than the rest I began a trend with all three of these characters to wear chains on their body with charms that represent their moons. So he's got two little moons on chains around his collarbone. And as a few final added details, I gave him some little red streaks in his bangs to hint at the red planet name and thought, mm, that's not enough. And I also gave him some frosted roots to allude to the polar ice caps once again. And because war and thinly veiled symbolism, I gave him some little horns on his head that hint, hey, maybe he's not the most morally upright dude. And I also gave him a shield on his back that's probably just a giant rock and a little spear that's made of volcanic rock at one end and ice on the other. Wow, 
that's not on the nose at all. But speaking of on the nose, I also did try to put some thought into the personality of these characters to help inform their designs a little bit more, which is something I unfortunately did not have the time to do in the first video, but seeing as how Mars is the god of war and it's a bit of a hot and cold planet with volcanic activity but also ice caps, I figured he'd be a bit of a bad boy, a little brooding and passive aggressive but also kind of hot headed depending on the situation. And since Mars is one of the smallest planets in the solar system, it has all these different geological features that can vary a lot from each other and we're constantly studying it to learn more about it so it's a little mysterious. I feel like he would be a really angsty teen who's kind of cunning and cheeky, always trying to get a rise out of people and just kind of being a little chaotic for his own enjoyment. I'm sure the House of the Dragon archetypes are really going to seep into my character work over the next couple of months because, you know, Aemon Targaryen lives rent free in my head at this point, but I think he'd have a little bit of Daemon Targaryen energy whenever you're just not quite sure what he's gonna do, but he does have somewhat of a softer side at times. He's just confusing. I think he'd create a fun dynamic with the other two in this episode, who I very much see as a trio of brothers who have a fun sibling rivalry. Which brings me to our next planet, Jupiter. Unlike the first few planets I did, Mercury, Venus, and Earth, there was just so much research material and interesting information about Jupiter's composition and even its moons that I could never fit it into one design in a week. So I tried my best to pack the information into this one, but there is just so very much. Honestly, also the wide range of ideas that I could pull from probably made this the hardest design I tackled this week, even though it was the one I was most excited for, because I always have to make things harder for myself. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and the first gas giant in our series. Jupiter's mass is two and a half times bigger than all the other planets in our solar system combined, making him the largest boy in our series by far, hence why he is named after the Roman king of the gods sky, and thunder. Jupiter is composed of hydrogen, helium, and likely has a rocky core, and has a quote, slight but obvious bulge around the equator. Jupiter's interior generates more heat than it receives from the sun. Once again, this guy is just, he's sweating bullets, he's gassy, he has liver disease. I think this is painting a picture of his characterization already. Jupiter boasts more than 80 moons, although scientists haven't quite nailed down a solid number. And it has four large Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, which I've already established here are just absolutely fascinating to me, especially Europa, which has an ice-covered ocean, which might be able to support, I don't know, extraterrestrial life of a certain nature. And Io is also fascinating because it is the most volcanically active celestial body in our solar system. Jupiter is also perpetually covered in clouds and ammonia crystals, meaning it probably smells like pee. There may be a thin layer of water clouds underlaying the ammonia clouds, and the water clouds are assumed to generate thunderstorms in the same way as terrestrial thunderstorms driven by the heat rising from the interior. Electrical discharges can also be up to a thousand times more powerful than lightning on Earth, which is very cool. And there is also upper atmosphere lightning called elves or sprites that appear blue or pink due to hydrogen. The now iconic eye of Jupiter is a storm that's been raging on for hundreds of years since its discovery in 1831, and certainly earlier than that, and is the subject of much lore and mythology. Juno missions show that there are several polar cyclone groups at Jupiter's poles. The northern group group contains nine cyclones, with a large one at the center and eight others all around it, which are pretty visible in a lot of photography of Jupiter. Finally, Jupiter is believed to be the oldest planet in the solar system, which concludes that I was right in the first video, Jupiter would certainly be a dilf. To get to his design, oh boy his design, I struggled literally so much. I began with the idea of a long capelet, cloak, and a little butt skirt to help sell the stormy slash cloudy atmosphere of the planet, with a tighter jumpsuit that would represent the banding on Jupiter, and maybe this idea would hit better with someone else, but it just wasn't hitting with me. And I went through a ton of iteration to find something better. I went for different boots, different belts, I eventually switched out the capes for more of a cloud-like fur that goes around his collar, and I also just generally made his hair way more wild and gave it more tonality. We were all over the place. But after a lot more experimenting and trying to figure out what on earth I'm doing, I eventually went in a more wizardy robe direction for him so I can make the bottom of his robes look more like 
billowing clouds. And to add more of a fantasy edge, I added a thick leather belt, cuffs, and kept the fur around his neck. And I also kept the fur around his neck because I kind of wanted it to look like a lion's mane because I also wanted to allude to the animal companions he has to represent the four Galilean moons, four little lion cubs. And this time I made sure to make their coloration a little closer to that of Europa, Eo, Ganymede, and Callisto. The rest of Jupiter's 80 plus moons are represented by the constellation jewelry hanging from his fur. And the eye of Jupiter is also represented by the brooch on his chest. Other than that, I just gave him lots of wild billowing hair and a beard to reference storm clouds and wild weather conditions, as well as one blue eye and one red eye, once again as an eye of Jupiter reference. And for most of his design, focused on referencing the coloration of Jupiter in his robes and furs. Anyways, Jupiter's personality is that of a dad. Um, he definitely have big personality to match his gaunt size. Am I using gaunt correctly there? I don't know. I think he'd have major boomer energy and be a bit of an airhead sometimes. And in classic dad fashion, I think he's just loud. A heavy drinker, he'll mansplain to you a little bit. He's a little gassy. But as a storm planet, he's got that electric charisma and booming, thunderous presence. You can hear his laugh from the other end of the house. And when he tells a story, the entire room goes quiet to listen. He's got a very kingly presence and commands respect. And I think he's always trying to have have a good time while also giving off some subtle midlife crisis energy. I think he would butt heads with Mars because he's so earnest and unironic and Mars is just a little Gen Z brat so when he makes fun of Jupiter, Jupiter has no idea he's being mocked and he'd probably get along well with Saturn since I think they'd be closer in age and maturity levels and they have that brotherly respect and bond. But Saturn feels more like that cool uncle slash older brother to Mars while Jupiter is a little bit more domineering, older brother slash dad. In short, I think they're a slightly dysfunctional and competitive sibling trio where Mars kind of has a chip on his shoulder, Jupiter thinks he's the best, and Saturn is actually the coolest, which makes for a fun dynamic. Also, for as much as I struggled with this one, I think this piece was actually my favorite piece of the group, so go figure. And last but not least, we have Saturn, which is the planet that I thought was going to give me the most problems this week, but I somehow ended up finishing it first. Who knew? Anyways, Saturn is also pretty wild. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun, is the second largest planet in the solar system behind Jupiter, and is another gas giant. It has a prominent ring system, which is composed of mostly ice particles with a small amount of rocky debris and dust. Saturn's atmosphere exhibits a banded pattern similar to Jupiter's, but Saturn's bands are much fainter and are much wider near the equator. The outer atmosphere is generally bland and lacking in contrast, although long-lived features can appear. And since it's also a gas giant, Saturn has a lot of weather activity and high winds. And because of that high weather activity, sometimes storms and distinct features can occur. A storm that occurred in 1990 was an example of a great white spot, which was a unique but short-lived phenomenon that occurs once every Sartorian year around the time of the Northern Hemisphere's summer solstice. Another phenomenon is a series of cloud features found in the Northern Latitudes Cassini observed, nicknamed the String of Pearls, which were cloud clearings that reside in deeper layers of clouds. And Saturn's usually bland atmosphere occasionally exhibits long lived ovals and other features common on Jupiter. I don't know why I even included some of this. I feel like there's a lot of space ramble in this video, but I thought it was fascinating. So yeah, that was some information about weather on planets millions of miles away. I'm sure you really needed to know that. Here's the spicy part. Saturn has at least 83 moons, 53 of which are officially named, which do not include moonlets on its rings. Wow. Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest in the solar system, is larger than Mercury and is the only moon to have a substantial atmosphere. And I just have to insert this here because I love it. While none of the moons in our solar system have their own moons, it is possible for moons to have moons. And according to the Smithsonian, there's a bunch of proposed terms for moons of moons, including submoons, moonitos, moon moons, and last but not least, with pronunciation coined by the esteemed Julian Solomina, moons, which is spelled like this, <laughs> which proves to me once again that space is just absurd. The moon's made of cheese, so if you're eating cheese, maybe the moon. <laughs> <laughs> While Saturn has like 83 moons, it does have six prominent ice moons that tend to stick out as a group, which are Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, 
Dion, Rhea, and of course, Titan. And finally, Saturn is named after the Roman god of wealth and agriculture. So going into this design, I was getting that similar grand and larger than life vibe that I got with Jupiter, but a bit more graceful and subdued. So obviously I went with softer, circular shaped language for this character. And I also wanted more of a celestial avant-garde presence to this character. And since I saw them as being a little softer and more mysterious, I also leaned more into androgyny and slightly more neutral design language. For some reason, and this is so very specific, whenever I was reading about Saturn, it just reminded me of the vibes that I got from the Herald of the Change from the one scene in the Dune movie. So very specific. But that idea did in fact influence a good bit of this design. So design-wise, I really liked these sheer puffy shirts and sheer sparkly shirts that I saw on Pinterest, so that was definitely a jumping off point for this design. So I kind of went for a sheer black shirt on the torso with sheer gold puffy sleeves and over that a long tunic type garment to represent some of Saturn's banding along with some high gold boots that feel like futuristic greaves and a long sheer cloak that captures some of the blues and hues of space. I started trying to represent Saturn's rings with these weird shoulder accessories and a weird headpiece and the thumbnail but I just didn't love it and eventually I went in a totally different direction by giving them some very circular saucer-like shoulder armor to represent Saturn's rings a little more overtly and added a halo headpiece as well. And that gave me a wonderful opportunity to add in that visual motif that carries throughout each of these designs of having jewelry that represents their moons. And since Saturn has just so many, I went for a very delicate system of chains hanging off their shoulder piece with little moon jewels on them to represent the minor moons. And to represent their six more prominent ice moons, I used the same concept as I did with the other two and gave them six animal companions, this time six gray slash ice colored wolves, which are controlled through the floating orbs around their hands. I also tried to vary the sizes of the wolves since the six moons vary in size a good bit with Titan and Rhea being the largest. I wish I could have added a little bit more personality to all of the moons in these designs, but the moons are just... They're also pretty detailed, so I just didn't have time to do that research this week. As for personality, I saw this character as being a bit more mature and quiet, kind of stormy like Jupiter, but a storm where the thunder is far away. I see them as being a lover of finer things since they're based on the god of commerce, maybe a bit snobby, but definitely very elegant. Which is why I really leaned into gold motifs, especially since Saturn is often yellow in hue. I see them as having a stoic personality, which makes them generally get along with people since they're not super confrontational and more willing to listen. I think it would give them an air of wisdom and silent judgment. I think Saturn and Mars would be kind of a duo since they're kind of opposites. Like Mars just causes trouble and Saturn being the true neutral that they are, are just complicit because they're along for the ride. I feel like they would definitely pester Jupiter so he gets all stormy and ragey because they think it's funny. Kind of like how two brothers in a set of three will sometimes gang up on the other one. Not the most depth, but I think these three would have a fun dynamic. Especially whenever I'm done with the full pantheon and I have these little weird sibling units of planets that are close together in the solar system. I'm looking forward to seeing all the finished planets and how the like weird found family sibling dynamic is gonna be, you know? In terms of finishing up the art for these, I like to make these designs feel like little finished pieces, so I added similar backgrounds to each of them with the other two planets behind them to make them feel like a matching set. And with that, all of these designs are done, and yeah, I think these were fun to work on, and I am surprised by how pleased I am with the results, but I also am clearly a little art blocked and burned out right now and in some ways I wasn't able to execute them as well as I wanted. I like really struggled with Jupiter, didn't see that coming. And just overall I feel like I need to work on my menswear clothing library to get some more interesting silhouettes in here. But this is kind of practice for that anyways. So uh, thank you so much for watching, that's it for this video and I'll see you next week for some long awaited sketchbook content. And as always the biggest and most cosmic of thank yous goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Wolven underscore, Lovisa, Corvid Dome, Eloquent Silence, Midnight Nova, John L, Meeks Hunter, Cleos, Blue, In the Galaxy, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, Satoni, Sushi McNushi, Megan Penland, Owlian, Bean the Bread, Bobo McFo, Gravity Drop, Hypnos, India, Jessica Dilling, Katie, Michael Twycross, Refnlings, Silver, Sweet Winter Garden, Welly Kelly, and Will Schmidt.
Now, if you'll excuse me, I do have to leave. I have to return to my home planet. Bye. Bye.